studio. I'd like to introduce you to my Schimmel Grand Piano, and today we're going to continue our studies on sound waves and focus specifically on the piano. By the way, that was a snippet of a Chopin etude entitled Winter Wind that you just heard. Let's talk about how the piano works. First, we're going to cover source of vibration. Then, we're going to talk about resonation and then different factors that affect the frequency of the sound. So here we have the piano. There are 88 keys starting from A0 all the way up to C8. And if we take a closer look, look what happens when I play some notes. If you'll notice, whenever I press a key, the hammer inside of the piano raises up and hits the string while the, the damper raises so the string can vibrate. And when I release the key, the hammer falls back down and the damper comes back down to stop the vibration. As far as resonation goes, when the string vibrates after, struck, after being struck by the hammer, the vibrations are transmitted to the bridge of the piano, which is made of uh, solid wood so it's stable enough because the bridge has to transfer the vibrations into the soundboard which is pretty much the main body of the piano. So that the soundboard acts as like a filter and can transfer these vibrations into the sound. Another important thing about resonation is that we have the sustaining pedal on the right, which when I press the pedal down, so now all the dampers are off of the strings, allowing the strings to vibrate freely. So this allows the strings to continue vibrating and sound waves to continue propagating for maximum resonance. Then when I lift up the pedal, the dampers will stop the vibration. There are different factors that affect the frequency of each note. Since the piano has, has strings that are fixed, you can't cha change the length of them. So I can't change the pitch or frequency of each note because it is what it is. But different factors went into building the piano, um, such as the length of the strings, the mass of the strings, the, and the tension of the strings. All these will affect the frequency and the pitch of each note because over time, uh, pianos evolved and the strings became heavier um, and more tense over the years. So, so now we have um, strong metal strings made with steel wire uh, for, for the maximum, maximum power. When we're talking about intensity of sound, let's take a look. If I, if I play a note just normally, the hammer will hit the string and it's, that's all. But when I play the note harder, more intensity, the hammer hits the string with greater speed and power, so creating a louder sound, and less intense, the hammer hits the string with less speed, so the sound is quieter. For the experiment, I picked four notes, the G, middle C, A, and E. If you're familiar with piano tuning, when the tuner tunes the instrument, it's all, all the notes are tuned based on the A, which is at 440 hertz. If you're looking at the grand staff, we have the G, C, A, and E, the four notes that I'm using, displayed here. And this, I created this chart to show you the different uh, values of frequency. When you have a well-tuned piano, these are the set values of frequency. For the G, we have 
196 hertz, the middle C is 262 hertz, the A is 440 hertz, and the E, the e is 659 hertz. Now, when I use the Pasco uh, uh, Data Studio to see what my piano was at, I uh, came across some interesting comparisons. The G turned out on my piano to be 194 hertz, the middle C was 260 hertz, A came out right on the dot, 440 hertz, and the E was at 663 hertz, so in general it was pretty close. Let's see if we can replicate the A4 440 hertz that we found earlier. I'm using a MacBook Pro and I have the Pasco Data Studio. For my sound input I've got a Blue Yeti microphone and of course we have the piano. Let's take a look at the A again and how the sound wave changes. So I'm going to start the experiment and we're going to hear the A and let's just observe the E, the waves. So at first when the sound is most intense, when the note is first played, the amplitude is, is greater. So I'm going to stop it, see if I can get the proper... I, I waited a little bit to to wait till the sound settled a little bit. Now we're going to adjust it, see if we can line it up and should be around 440. So somewhere around here. Okay, so here is around 440 to 442. So it's pretty close. I adjusted the amplitude and wavelength and, and down here you'll see we have around 440 hertz. So, so it's a pretty accurate representation. So now let's take a look at the G below middle C. Okay. So I'm going to adjust everything again. It's a little off, but still pretty close. So again, the accepted value is about 196 hertz, and we're, we're right about there, 196, 197. So again, pretty accurate. And one important thing to notice between the experiment with the, um, the A and the G was that the lower nodes have a lower frequency and we know that the speed of sound at room temperature is about 343 meters per second so when we have a lower frequency that means that the the wavelength will increase because like I said this the speed is remaining constant so the lower notes have a lower frequency and longer wavelength and the higher notes have higher frequency and shorter wavelengths in addition to the resources that I mentioned earlier, um, two big helps were this piano manufacturing guy which actually came with uh, the, my shimmel and it's got a lot of great information about you know um, the action uh, assembly of the piano and the you know how everything works, the components of it and talks about the soundboard, um, a lot of great information in here. And then this Wikipedia article which talks, talks about the frequencies of the piano, uh, different keys, and it's got a great chart here that shows you the targeted frequencies of each note. Here's the the A4 at 440 hertz and then middle C down here at about 262 and, and um, from, from the very first A, the A0, like I had mentioned. So it's got a great, uh, great guide here. Mm -hmm.